After watching this video, you're going to understand why human beings created technology of blockchain. Hello, my name is Dmitry Naskais. Hello from New York City. And today this video is devoted to elections based on blockchain technology. Thank you very much for your attention and let's start. Elections based on blockchain actually is not a new thing. Back in 2018, in a small town of Zug in Switzerland, municipal government of this small town created elections for their citizens to decide uh, small things in their city using blockchain technology voting system. So it was successful, it was secure, everybody liked it. Southern Korean government, for example, they spent $2.2 million to explore the possibility of blockchain technology in their elections, but they just tested it. They haven't actually did that. Also in 2020, Belarusian opposition in Belarus and Minsk, they created blockchain elections for the opposition, people who support opposition, democratic forces of Belarus, and they run elections as an alternative to the government elections. And at the same summer of 2020, it was also successful. But all that is a small thing. But recently, actually one week ago, there was a big election that involved the whole planet and its elections to people of Belarusian citizens abroad. It's um, like a million people who left Belarus since 2020. And uh, also before that, uh, people left uh, Belarus to live in Western Europe, uh, in the United States, in New Zealand, in Canada, in Australia, in different countries. And one week ago, Belarusian abroad, they hosted their first elections, as was also on blockchain technology, for their parliament in exile. 7,000 people voted and they voted and elected 80 representatives who are now going to decide the fate, the ideas and the future and the reforms of the free Belarus. A lot of people can say, ah, oh, this is not a real elections, but those elections actually had a real uh, components of the real elections. It was debates, there were different candidates, different political parties, 281 person run and 80 people were elected, 12 blocks or political parties. So in my opinion, it was successful. Also, it was a DDoS attack on this election. So nowadays you probably heard that people, hackers, governments, they trying to attack uh, in cyberspace elections they're trying to manipulate so Belarusian people in exile they had a blockchain uh, elections uh, and it was attacked but the attack was very short there was uh, two uh, like two short time frames of the attack it was 17 million bots and um, but still uh, professionals need to examine who actually was behind this attack what was the what was the strategy of the actor who tried to get the fingerprint of, of this system? Um, I can say as the person who works in the cybersecurity field that it's very important to study that because elections, uh, democratic free elections are under attack all over the world. Uh, people who support dictatorship, people who support um, totalitarian style of government they hate democracy they don't want people to vote and um, that's the answer to my first uh, sentence in this video why the blockchain technology was created so i can say by studying this uh, uh, subject that blockchain technology helps people to host secure and very important fair elections and um, how does it work uh, also i want to add that uh, in uh, belarusian parliament and exile elections so one week ago was not only blockchain technology it was also ssi technology self-sovereign identity technology so people were making pictures of themselves pictures of the passport so the uh, platform can, can identify that there is it's a belarusian citizen and they can vote and all this information wasn't stored in the cloud or in third-party uh, database. 
uh, that can be breached. It was stored in the device of the person who was voting, and uh, that's why it was secure. Uh, the person who is behind the platform who created uh, this blockchain election platform um, is a Belarusian citizen. Uh, he lives in Eastern Europe and uh, I spoke briefly with him. His name is uh, Paul and uh, he's a very modest person. He's IT professional, he's IT businessman and he self-financed this uh, platform and he actually was behind 2020 a blockchain elections of the opposition in Belarus uh, called Voice, Golos. Uh, so he has some experience and now he has experience in the DDoS attack, what happened actually in the first several hours of the elections. We cannot call it attack because uh, they didn't win, they didn't do anything. So for 30 minutes or something, the voting platform didn't work, the domain didn't work, but then everything worked and in the end the uh, elections were finalized and successful. Uh, Mr. Paul Pavel, uh, who created this uh, wonderful system, told me that he doesn't have any political ambitions, he doesn't want to be a minister of elections in New Belarus, he just wants to help uh, Belarusian people uh, to become, to have civil activity, uh, to participate in decision making, to uh, put the small part of like their positive energy into belief of the politicians who are gonna help them to create reforms and change their lives. Um, as I said, he's a very modest person. Uh, he also have an app called New Belarus, Nova Belarus. I immediately downloaded it and he said that that's his biggest project. It will be, his vision is that it's a digital community of Belarusian people all over the world. And immediately I got a value from this app actually, because I saw it was an event in New York City yesterday at 6.30 p.m. It was an event hosted by a writer from Belarus, his name is Viktor Martinovich. And he gave an interesting speech about literature of uh, Belarusian authors abroad. So it was very, I'm curious about all uh, culture of modern uh, uh, literature of Belarus. And um, it was very useful. And I met uh, other representative of Belarus uh, immigrants, um, other professionals in literature and art field. Uh, because of this platform, I found out about this event, which was actually free and in the um, auditorium of Hunter College in Manhattan. If you watch this video and you're a person from Belarus, uh, um, download this app called New Belarus, Nova Belarus. Also, let's pay attention to the uh, DDoS attack on these elections uh, that happened one week ago. I spoke with um, one of the team members of CyberSaka Incorporated, that's a company based in New York City. How you investigate those uh, attacks and what, what does it mean? And, uh, um, there is several uh, scenarios how, how it happened. Um, the biggest hater of those elections is the dictatorship government of Belarus, of course. But uh, they control the country right now, they control the military, they control the people, so they don't care what's happening abroad. So maybe some ransomware gang that associated with Russian government as a favor or to bring some attention to themselves did that as a favor. Uh, to Belarusian dictatorship government. That's one scenario. Um, some maybe special police of Belarus, maybe they paid somebody or ask uh, somebody who is asso associated with them, uh, like a freelancer, a black hat, black hat hacker to do this attack. Um, it's not actually an attack, you know, because um, it was just like a fingerprint and uh, for some time the domain didn't work, you know, like, so it was an attempt to, um, it's like somebody entered the room and smell uh, the infrastructure, what's happening here and left, you know. Um, but of course it can be more serious, you know, maybe that was something that only detected this DDoS attack, maybe it was something else. Uh, also, it can be just a person like a um, crazy uh, scientific uh, hacker who is interested in different vulnerabilities. And this blockchain elections, it's a new thing, you know? So uh, let's see how does it work? How, what is the, uh, how it can be exploited? Uh, how it can be uh, damaged? How it can be invaded? 
Um, so it can be just just a random person who is interested in like modern technologies of vulnerability. So we need to investigate further. Here is the information that we got. There was 17,000 bots, so it was a, like a medium-sized botnet. IP addresses was uh, from Chile, uh, from this country. So um, uh, basically, if you um, involve US government, for example, that actually can be involved because the platform that was used to host uh, the elections uh, is uh, the technology based in United States. So basically DDoS attack was on uh, geographically on United States territory. So this is a federal crime. So you can go and file a complaint with FBI, but of course, nobody gonna take this case because they, um, they have a lot of cases uh, to deal with right now. Um, maybe if president elect of 2020 in exile, Svetlana Tikhanovska, if she write a letter of support to the prosecutor, please take this case and she call Biden and tell him to be involved because this is attack on first ever democratical elections in the Belarusian history. So they know this uh, uh, area. Belarus is actually very important uh, um, ally of uh, Russian government of Putin. So if you roll like this, so maybe the government of United States can take the case, but it's very difficult to investigate, but it's possible. Maybe uh, you can write a tweet about it and tag Svetlana Tikhanovska, Biden, and uh, any other person uh, or leader or politician who is interested in democracy all over the world. So maybe we can bring awareness to this. But you can agree with me that those type of thing is very progressive and um, now we're gonna see how this parliament and exile of Belarusian people abroad gonna work what they're gonna do what they're gonna decide how they're gonna deal with political prisoners in Belarus how they're gonna self-finance I'm actually involved in this I was uh, supporting one of the political blocks that actually was elected uh, to the uh, parliament in exile so I will be uh, involved in uh, cyber security, in cyber hygiene, in cyber reforms, uh, in, um, in any moves regarding cyber crime. So I, I will be involved. I will try to be involved and useful. Um, so I have like a personal interest in this. And uh, I can say that um, those elections were um, really fair elections. and. Um, to tell you the truth, that less and less political leaders in the world are interested in something like that. Because who are interested in fair elections? Fair people. And, um, you know, fairness is not popular right now. Um, we, for a long time, even in the United States, we have like very strange leaders in charge. Uh, like um, Donald Trump was found guilty in a um, criminal trial uh, yesterday. Uh, Biden has also, um, if you listen to his interviews recently, he's saying a lot of strange things. Uh, so um, I think we need different type of leaders nowadays. Maybe engineers are um, the best leaders to uh, fix the chaos in the world of political world and so on because engineers are the biggest amount of uh, successful people actually in the world like people who have one million dollars say for example who has their life in orders are like 80 percent of them are engineers so three thousand years ago in ancient greece people were thinking that the best ruler is uh, an artist independent philosopher for example so now i can say my opinion tell me in the comment if you agree with me that the engineer can be uh, a nice um, leader but we are so far from it and that's why again i'm gonna repeat myself that blockchain blockchain technology is the the biggest um potential in it is to host the elections on blockchain so nobody can fix it nobody can corrupt it and it can be visible as a spread uh, right away and any manipulation is detected so this is a way to do elections and uh, uh, a lot of people can critique uh, dem democratical system of elections but as um, a lot of uh, smart people said democracy is not perfect uh, sometimes it's bad but it's the best system we got out there so thank you very much for your attention if you want to read more 
about uh, Belarusian uh, elections on blockchain for the parliament in exile called Coordination Council, actually. You can go to their website. I'm going to put the website link to the description to, to this video. Again, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, hello from New York City. Uh, my name is Dmitry Naskovets. If you are first time on my channel, please subscribe like if you like this video and click dislike if you hate something uh, haters are also welcome and let me know what you think in the comments thank you very much and have a nice day